and uh, my dad's the pastor of that church. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that is our connection there. And um, my dad had open heart surgery this week, and uh, while it was funny, he, it, people saved in VBS that week. Uh, Sunday, he baptized nine people. Monday, he's in for open heart surgery. Uh, but you uh, pray for dad. Uh, he's still trying to, to, to recover, but uh, God is faithful. But uh, while I was there, the men of the church were waiting on me because they knew I would come in and see dad, and they give, a, give me a plaque for the church. It simply says, Thank you for serving the Lord with us in VBS 2018, Silver Shoals Baptist Church. Hey, when in souls. Let it be a reminder that we're in it for the king's business. For the king's business. Let's talk this morning. John chapter 8, verse 36. If you're there, let me hear you say amen. amen. All right. My Bible reads, it says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free Indeed. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you would speak to us today. God, remind us, Lord, of the realities of our freedom that you have so greatly blessed us with. And Lord, the truth of where it comes from. And we worship you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me read something to you. Y'all may have heard this before. But it's a little excerpt. It says, When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is an excerpt from our Declaration of Independence. And it is what our country will celebrate this week the, uh, on the 4th of July, our independence. And the founding of our great nation was based upon the fundamental pursuits that are listed right there that I read for you. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And these are words that, which we use to describe our freedom. It is our nation's motto, our anthem. It is in everything that is around us that gives us the right to be America. And thank God for America. Without these three values, our country will become just like any other. These are the things that have set us apart. But there was a price for the inscription of these words. There was a price that was paid. <clears throat> and there is a price that has continued to be paid for us to be free. <coughs> Excuse me. But ladies and gentlemen, before there was an America, before there was our country, there was still freedom. Because freedom is not in a flag. <coughs> Excuse me, the devil's trying to choke me to death because he knows this is going to be good. <clears throat> but before the flag ever flew, before the bullets were ever shot, there is freedom. Because freedom, ladies and gentlemen, is from Christ Jesus. And it is in Christ Jesus. The scripture that I read there for you says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free. Indeed. Now, I've never taken the uh, context of my message from anything other than the Scripture, but this morning I want to share with you simply three points. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But I want to talk to you about the freedom that's in Christ. Some of you here today, you say, well, I'm free, but I don't feel free. Any of you ever felt like you was in bondage? Like you were in chains? You ever felt like you was just oppressed? 
You ever felt like you were depressed because of all the weights of the responsibilities that are upon you? You ever felt like things just wasn't going your way? <clears throat> you ever felt like... I see you coming, Joe. Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Y'all give Joe a hand. <clears throat> Woo, all right. But have you ever felt like you were just kind of lost, trapped, shut in? You ever felt like your head was just under the water and if you could just get a breath, things would be better? You ever felt like you was just dangling out on a limb? I'm trying to give you some illustrations here, people. Give me some feedback. I'm going to keep doing this till you tell me. <laughs> but this morning, I'm here to remind you that there's freedom. There's freedom from your hurt. There's freedom from your hatred. There's freedom from anger and, 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 and bitterness. There's freedom from animosity. There's freedom from the chains which hold you. There's also freedom from sin and death. And ladies and gentlemen, in whom the Son sets free, you are free indeed. We find freedom in some of the craziest places. Some of you today, you feel like you're just locked up, bound up, shut in. But I want to tell you, there's some men that they found freedom. Paul and Silas, they found freedom in prison. Matter of fact, they found so much freedom in prison that when the doors flew open and the chains fell off, they stayed right where they was at. They were free. I think of Daniel in the lion's den. He found freedom in the lion's den. Just petting them old cats like they was just house pets. I think of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Oh, I'm sorry. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is what you know them as. But see, they're God-given names. But in the fire, literally in the fire, they found freedom. Matter of fact, the king even declared it. When he looked over into the furnace, he said, are they not loosed and walking about? Some of you are in some of the toughest prisons in the fire. Some of you feel like you're in the lion's den of life, but I want you to know there's freedom in Christ Jesus this morning. There's freedom for our life. And I want to share with you these three fundamental pursuits. Life, liberty, and happiness. Well, first of all, there's life. You know, life should be free. Hear the emphasis. Life should be free. Nothing in life, ladies and gentlemen, is free. Me and the kids, we even joke, air is not even free. Buy a bag of chips, you'll know air is not free. <laughs> but life should be free. But what is life? There's the question. What is life? Because if you ask the world, the world's idea of, life, of uh, freedom in life is saying that they should have the freedom to choose life. They should have a life that's freedom of choice, freedom of the right to destroy themselves if they desire, freedom uh, to, to do the drugs, the alcohol, the sex, the, the, the ability, the freedom to have no self-control. You see, that's freedom in the world's eyes. Freedom to establish riches and wealth at any means possible. I should be free to do all the things I should want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not freedom. That's a lie. That's a deception of the enemy. Life, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, is free. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. You see, there is no life outside of Jesus Christ. There's just variations of death. You see, outside of Jesus Christ, you may walk around in the physical thinking you're okay, but death is always upon you. But Jesus gives us life. Jesus is life. And in Him, we can find not just any old life. You know, a lot of people say, well, I went to church and, you know, I got, I got saved and I'm going to heaven. But then they live like they're miserable. They live like death and damnation is upon them all the time. Any witnesses? Hello? 
But Jesus said, listen to this, in John 10, 10, He said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't say, I just come to save you from hell. He said, I come to give you life and that you can have it abundantly. That means you can wake up in the morning and be happy in Jesus. And you don't need the little guy to sing, because I'm happy. You don't need him. Because if you wake up in life and the life of Jesus is in you, life can be abundant. Stop listening to the lie of the enemy. Not only did he come to give us abundant life, he came to give us everlasting life. He came to give us eternal life. I love John 3, 16. And it ends in, they shall not perish but have everlasting life. We forget about the life. You see, to us, life means I can get, I can receive, I can have, I can want, I can do. I'm going to hurt your feelings. If you're born again, if you are a Christian, if you know Jesus Christ, if you're a personal Savior, if the Spirit of God lives inside of you, life is not about you. It's about Him. And if your life is all about you, there may be an indicator. You might need to check whose life are you living. Know you not that you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Life comes from Christ. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, life with Jesus is good. It is good. I love the old life is good shirts. Y'all seen those? I love those. Let me tell you something. Life is good. But He came to give us a good life, an everlasting life, eternal life. The rich young ruler asked Jesus, he said, Teacher, what should I do that I can inherit eternal life? Why did he ask Jesus? Because Jesus is the only one you can ask. Period. But not only did Jesus come that we could have life, to give us life and give it more abundantly, but in this world, in this physical time in which you live... You see, a lot of people have separated the physical and the spiritual. You see, we come to church on Sunday for the spiritual. We get up, we put on our spiritual clothes, we put on our spiritual makeup, we put on our spiritual mask, you know, we put on our holy roller shoes, we come to church and that's our spiritual time. But then we wake up on Monday, and I love the brother's testimony about the lady uh, realizing the difference. Finally, that from... It wasn't just a Sunday morning thing. He said that she would get up and go to church, but then on Monday they'd ask the spirits. You know what? I wonder how many Christians in this place alone do that every week. We come on Sunday morning and we, we get the spiritual life here, but then we go out and we have to ask the demons or the spirits of the world to help us out. Just saying. But Jesus' words, ladies and gentlemen, are life. John 6, 68, Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. Some of you don't have life because you don't have the word of life in you. You don't spend time in life. This, you get this in you, this will do wonders for you. God's word is awesome. Do you, know there's, do you know there's wars in here? Bloody, gory wars. For you manly men, you know, you got to have some shoot them up and tear them down stuff. It's in here. For you ladies that love the love stories, it's in here. You want comedy? It's in here. You don't think God has a sense of humor? Read the book. It's in here. There's amazing stuff in here. I shared with the kids a couple of weeks ago. Did you know in the judges that there's a little girl that one of the kings ran into her tent and she took a tent spike and she nailed him to the ground through the head? Did you know that? that listen, they, they can't put nothing that cool on TV. And it's not in God's Word, but I think she got up and said, nailed him. 
There is some great stuff in God's Word. But if you don't look in God's Word, you can't know the life that there is to live. Jesus is life. Not only His Word's life, He is the bread of life. John 6, 35, I am the bread of life, and he that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst again. Never thirst, yeah, because he's the water of life. John 4, 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, speaking to the woman at the well, if you knew the gift of God and who it is to whom you say, give me a drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. You know what life is? Life is not drinking from the old uh, well, the old cesspool of life, but it's drinking from the fountain that'll never run dry. It is the life that's bubbling up into life eternal that Christ puts down inside of you when you come and you believe and accept Him. And it's not going back to the old cesspool and the old mud puddles that we used to wallow in, but it's living in Christ and letting Christ live life in you. Life is good. Jesus is life. And in Him there is life. John 1, 4. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. You know why a lot of people, even people who are Christians, suffer in life? Have a hard time with life? It's because maybe you don't have Him who is life in your life. I'm going to come back to that in just a few minutes. Jesus said in Matthew 10, And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And he who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Guys, you got to be willing to give up, to go up. you got to be willing to accept Christ. To have real life. True life is found in Jesus. So that's the the pursuit of life. Pursuit of liberty. Liberty is more than a statue that stands in a harbor. It is more than, you know, just being able to climb the ladder of prosperity. It's more than being able to choose your own spouse. Hallelujah for that. It is... It is more than being able to choose your own HMO or your own uh, PPO or, you know, all them O's that you get in insurance. It's more than being able to choose McDonald's or Burger King, Coke or Pepsi. Liberty is at the the essence of, of America. But liberty, being at liberty, having freedom... You know, it's one thing to say as a country or a people that we're free. But so many people are still in bondage. Sin holds people captive. Sin holds people in bondage. There are lost people, people who have never had a relationship with Jesus Christ, who are in bondage to sin. And the penalty for sin is death. And one day that death is going to lead to eternal damnation in hell because they haven't accepted Jesus Christ. But there are those who say that they've accepted Christ, but you still live in bondage even though you've got the captive maker, even though you've got the key, even though you've got life. You allow sin to keep you bound. You allow sin in your life to keep you in bondage and keep you from being what Christ has called you and desires for you to be. You see, God has a plan for each and every soul in this room. God has a purpose and a direction for everybody here. If we'll follow Him, He can work His perfect will in our lives. It doesn't mean life is going to be easy. See, there's the lie of the enemy. See, the enemy tells you, oh, well, you got saved. Isn't life supposed to be easy? No, you've been called to a battle. You got saved. God give you life eternal for you to fight the battle and not fear death. You think about it. What kind of soldiers would we have if you could send them into war and they weren't afraid of dying? Well, they'd be fearless. They'd be brave. They'd be awesome, right? It's the same thing that Christ wants for you. He wants you to know that He is life. And if His life is in you, you have no fear of death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? 
You see, the sting of death has been taken away for those who are in life in Christ. Hey, you can, stay, you can storm the, the gates of hell with a water pistol. You can swing out over hell on a noodle and, ch- and holler boo at the devil. Guess what? Life in Christ. You ever seen people go out and testify and witness to people in, in horrible places? I love our missionaries. And thank you, Brother Kenneth, for bringing uh, uh, these folks in. I think of Caitlin and Andrew and some of the others that are around us. This, uh, the Ellis family here. They're in places to where, hey, they don't have the freedom that we have here. God gives them the backbone of an oak to go out and proclaim the gospel. How does He do that? Because He takes the fear of death away. When you ain't got to worry about what man's going to do to you, whoo, you can get up and be good. We need to have liberty in Jesus. You know, Jesus' whole mission was to bring liberty. Matter of fact, He said that in Luke 4.18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. How does liberty come? The liberty comes by Jesus, and Jesus through the Spirit of God. Did you know that the Spirit brings liberty? 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the the Lord, listen to this, Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Some of you, you need to to get get a hold of this. The Spirit brings liberty. If you're not walking in the Spirit, if you're not walking in the Spirit of God, and Christ in you, strengthening you. The Bible says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm kind of the King James guy. I like it when they say, be filled with the Holy Ghost. I I like Holy Ghost. That's just me. To me, it, it makes a statement. But guys, when you're being filled by the Spirit of God, there's a freedom there's a freedom that nothing can stop you. What kind of what what does that do for you? Well, there's life, there's liberty. And he said the pursuit of happiness. How do we pursue happiness? Happiness is a emotion. Happiness can come and go from day to day. Happiness comes in situations. Happiness comes, you know, uh, just like sadness comes. It's, it's an emotion. You know, situations can make you happy. Songs can make you happy. I'm not going to sing that one again. But this happiness is in a roller coaster ride. The world is seeking happiness. Jesus did not come to bring you happiness. Jesus came and he even prayed. He said, Lord, I pray that you give them joy, my joy, and then it be full. Happiness is temporary, but joy is better than happiness. We can be affected. We can come into church and we can have an emotional experience. And there's a danger if we don't know the difference between the emotion and the spirit. There's a danger that... I'll just explain it this way. I don't like mama songs. John, don't sing mama songs. I don't like mama songs. Why? Because everybody's got a mama. Everybody. And when you sing about mama going home and being with Jesus, oh, everybody just cries, I got love mama. Feel like the water boy, I love my mama. <laughs> everybody's got a mama. Daddy songs, huh? Oh, daddy's got a home. Everybody's got a daddy. Oh, I love daddy. That's an emotion. But when the Spirit of God comes, it's different. It brings a joy, unspeakable and full of glory. When the Spirit comes, and see, here's something today that a lot of people don't understand. When you get saved, the Spirit of God takes up residence in you. See, Kent died a long time ago. This guy you see up here in front of you, 
It is not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. You see, this is just the old shell. This is just the home. This is just the old clay place that I cleaned out to make room for Jesus. Matter of fact, I couldn't even clean it out. I let Him do it. You see, on August the 19th, 1979, at Timber Ridge Baptist Church on the left-hand side in one of the old tall altar chairs, I bowed down and Kent Barrett at the age of six years old died and Jesus Christ came and took up residence in my life. And He said, because I live in you, you live. And it's not my life that I live, it's His life that I live. I Listen, they can't nobody take it away. They can't steal it. They can't snuff it out. They can't put it in the back burner. Hey, this is the life of Christ in me and when this old body is dead and gone and falls away and you roll it in the front and you bury it in the dirt whatever you do this life of Christ will live eternal and Kent will live with him because it is not me that lives but Christ some people don't understand that because they don't have the spirit of God in them and you see when the spirit comes Jesus gives both happiness and joy. Listen to this, Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God. It brings joy. 1 Peter 1, 8. Whom having not seen you love, and whom through now you see Him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We don't see Jesus in this place in the physical. We don't see Him physically walk up here in the body. But guess what? Not seeing Him, we still believe that He is Christ and He is Lord. And He said we rejoice in that with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, there are some days that I have seen Jesus. I've seen Jesus when people walk down into the baptism pool. I see Jesus when people serve and they love. I see Jesus when they're praying with one another. I see Jesus when they read His Word and they speak His Word one to another. So even though we may not see Him bodily, we see Him bodily and the bodies of those in which He inhabits and uses for His glory. Did I say that right? Y'all okay? Y'all okay? So I'm just dead man walking. But Jesus lives in me. It's not me that lives. It's Him. You can have joy in times of suffering. Any of you had some bad times? Colossians 1.11 says, Strength, strengthened with all might, According to His glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering and joyfulness. You can be going through the hardest time of your life and you still have the joy and the peace of Jesus. See, the world don't understand that. I can't tell you how many times I've stood beside the bed of a sick and dying loved one or the casket and think to myself, how do they do it without Jesus? I couldn't do it. Not only is He with us and gives us joy in times of suffering, but affliction. 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, And you became followers of us, of the Lord, having received the Word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. There it is again. You see, you've got to know Him to be filled by Him. His Word tells us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a continual filling. And it's even a command. For the believer, we ought to be full of the Holy Spirit of God. It ought to ooze out. It ought to leak out. It ought to slosh out. You ought to be able to pour it out on purpose. But are you being filled with the Spirit? Because guys, listen, when Jesus is in you and Jesus is with you, it don't matter what you face. You can find joy. He's with us during temptations. Many of you here today, you fight great temptations. Hard times in life. Things you struggle with. But James 1, 2 says, Consider it all joy, my brothers. That's a weird way of saying it, isn't it? Consider it joy when you experience various trials. Why? Because He's with us. He's with us. He protects us. He keeps us. He holds us. He molds us. He fashions us after 
Himself. True happiness, ladies and gentlemen, is found in Jesus. Today I'm grateful for our country. I'm grateful for America. I'm grateful to have been born in America. I thank God for our country. I thank God for those who have given their lives, the families who have given their loved ones, and those who are still giving of themselves today to keep us free so that I have this right to stand here and declare to you, thus saith the Lord. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. However, I worship our God through Jesus Christ because it is through Him that we have our life. It is in Him we have liberty. And it is in Him we find true happiness in all things. I said I was going to come back to the spiritual thing. Guys, y'all can come ahead. In recent days, I've shared with individuals a truth that has been burdened in my heart. In the church today, we've stopped sharing a, a reality, a truth. We've muddied the water, so to speak. The truth is that if you're here and Jesus doesn't reside in your heart, the Bible says you're lost. Matter of fact, you can find in the book of Acts that Paul run into some guys and they were reading the Scripture. And Paul asked them, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said, we don't know about the Holy Ghost. And he says, well, what baptism were you baptized to? And they said, well, we were baptized by John. According to the Scripture, ladies and gentlemen, these people were lost. You see, they understood, they believed that there was a Jesus. They believed there was a Messiah. They were even reading the Scriptures and studying. No doubt they went to temple and they met with the church. But they were lost. Because what had never happened for them was they had never had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God in their life. You see, without the Spirit of God coming into your life, there is never a change. Salvation doesn't take place. It's not good enough to know about Jesus. It's not good enough to believe that He's a good thought, that He's a great idea. It's not enough just to attend or even just to read the Scriptures. And here's the part that I struggle with. Ladies and gentlemen, there has to be a time when you literally ask Jesus to come into your heart to forgive you of your sins and be your Savior. It's not something that you can skim over. It's not something that you just pass by. Today, I want to challenge you and I want to ask you, do you know the place, the time, or do you know that there was one when you literally stopped and asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Now here's the good news. Let me tell you about joy. The Bible says that He will in no wise cast you out. He says in Romans 10, 13, that whoever, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means He will save you. And when He does, something wonderful happens. We repent of our sins and God supernaturally comes into our lives. He forgives us, cleanses us, He changes us. And we are, as we like to say, born again. But ladies and gentlemen, if you've never asked Jesus, according to God's Word, it says that you're lost. It says, according to God's Word, that Jesus will say, depart from me. For I never knew you. But here comes the joy again. For those of you that have asked Him. And you have received the change. And the Spirit of God does dwell in you. He said, He would say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come in. 
Come in. And I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Everybody in this room, trust me, you want to hear the words, well done. You want to hear the words, well done. But do you know Him? Have you asked Him? Does the Spirit of God, which brings life, liberty, and happiness, dwell within you? These are my last words. The psalmist said, my life is in my hands. Today, you have a decision to make. You've been challenged. You've been hopefully encouraged. If nothing else, entertained. But the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, your life is in your hand. You get to choose right now. Will I follow Him? Will I be obedient to Him? Will I surrender to Him? Or will I turn Him away? Nobody else is going to stand in judgment for you but you. Your life is in your hand. Today, come, receive Jesus. Experience the joy of salvation. Let's see. The guys are coming. You stand. Don't wait. If God's speaking to you, you come. Amen.